Hello, welcome to my home. Hello, welcome to my home. I wish I could just travel all around the country and do like all the bigger recorders, little yeah. documentaries about them. As if you know how to play. I do know how to play. Oh yeah, that's right. Go for the piano. There you go. Why didn't you change? Sneeze, it's gonna ruin this shot. You want me to work with this too? There was a part I needed to edit, so I could just do that right now. However, can only stay with you when the sun. Okay. The sun is low in the sky as the sun rides. It's our ash to tree trunks and back to grass again. They are not so tall and self important as the long rays and bent folks. I'm not gonna lie, I didn't actually I listen. Oh, I have an idea. Okay. I'm going to come over like this, and when I get over to here, you like you're this? Gonna... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's perfect. Get straight into the camera and scare everyone. But, uh, I can't tell what you're doing, though. You know. I don't know when. But that was cool. I'll even show it to you. Okay. People are going to think that was having the hundred and sixes than in the negative sixes. That's what I'm saying. You spill that and maybe go over to your piano. Hmm? Go over to your piano. Turn back up to the piano. I know I'm staging my lesson. <laughs> it does feel inappropriate. Do you want me to mess with some settings on here? Yeah, sure. Mess with those. Settings, sure. That wouldn't be good. Oh. 
This one's already done, so like, I'm just pretending to edit it. Maybe I'll change the color of it. You're be like, oh my god, she loves Johnny Depp. <laughs> <laughs> what color should I make it? Look uh, over here. So. Look down. Yeah, like that. I never look there when I'm like. Yeah. Uh, with the flowers in the right focus, it will look. Good. You'll see. Yeah. <laughs> But I can't play anything copyrighted. That's well, no, I mean, we're not using the audio anyway. We'll have you write something. Okay. to the chair and then kind of swivel over here.
Oh, where'd the light go? <laughs> It'll come no? back. No, it was just scary. <laughs> it was really pretty. Yeah, there's probably... Okay. It was pretty. And I love DSLRs. Okay, and before we leave the train, <laughs> Do you want me to look at you or not? What? I'm not shooting your butt. I'm shooting your okay. <laughs> now I'm shooting your butt. Oh, okay. Well, that's just because I want a lot of people to. The surroundings, these buildings are really cool. Let's see. Maybe we can talk about your surroundings and the thing. And huh? Talk about your surroundings and the voiceover or something. And the old architecture, you know, something. Like that. Yeah, just be like these houses are really old. And they're pretty, so I make pretty music. I want that balloon. I want it. Maybe hey, that's really what this documentary is about. About the a balloon. The, balloon. <laughs> the whole thing is about like me writing a song to try to seduce it. Yeah. What, what, what just happened? I just got the recollection. Look at it. It says, are we recording? And that's my address. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna open it. Wow. What good timing. It just got dark. Let's go with that one. Look. Uh, here. I am on here. Oh, it's so pretty. joking when I asked if it was the recollection. <laughs> I know, I didn't think it in there. <laughs> Aw, let's find you. Or maybe the credits are actually on Short the DVD. There are not very many. I just happen to have my camera. Yeah, that was perfect timing, man. Oh, look, so cool. it says again by heart. So cool. <laughs> so we can just edit this in like that movie or something. Oh, okay. <laughs> Hold it up. <laughs> just say who you are and what you do. Put your name on here real quick. I'm Megan Carnes, and I am a composer, mostly. Yeah, I also do some producing and such. Okay, what um, what brought you to the, or not what brought you, uh, what does it record to you in the community aspect? Um, Hit Record is pretty much a place where I can collaborate with other artists on stuff. Um, it gives me a lot of inspiration. My goal eventually is to be a film composer. That's what I hope to do with my life. And so Hit Record has given me a lot of opportunities to do that. It's also a good place to uh, get some inspiration. Um, there's lots of different stories and stuff that I've, you know, based my music on. Um, I've collaborated with se several other musicians, which is awesome. Yeah. And what about the friend, and you know, the friend uh, aspect of it? Um, you know, I've made a lot of friends from Hit Record because we're all artists, we're all creative people, and we support each other, not only artistically, but, you know, just as friends, which is awesome. And it's just like a big, loving family, as cheesy as that might sound, but really, we are. Just a big happy community. Um, okay. Uh, 
Why composing and not just uh, music making? Why composing? Yeah, like composing for films instead of just... Um, well, when you make music just by yourself, that's one thing, but I think movies are so cool how there's so many different aspects that go into it. You know, there's the directors, the screenwriters, the cinematographers, the editors, the composers, obviously, the sound designers, the actors, and then just everybody like working together to create this final thing that no one of them could have ever produced on their own. I just think that's so cool. And plus, every time I write music, this is just how I do it, I always picture a scene in my head anyways. I'm better at composing for a scene than just like an abstract concept or something. It's just where my strength is, I guess. What are you, so are you going for a specific style when you compose, or what do you try to, what, what are your, what's your mindset when you do it? It really depends on what I'm composing for, you know. So, like, let me think. For example, when I did the intro music for Fade In, I was more, you know, going for like a really mysterious type vibe. Like, cool, mysterious kind of fantasy-esque. But then, like, when I composed, like, for this short that about like a dark comedy about a clown, I was more in the like, you know, silly, kind of lighthearted mindset, so it really depends what I'm working on. I'm a chameleon. <laughs> um, okay, uh, what do you see... Do you see a certain, like, trend in your music, or, or what do you, what do you... What do you, okay, well, the songwriting process for you, what, what does it start out as and where does it go and how does it evolve? Um, most of my songs start off as like a random melody that just pops into my head. Like I can sit there for hours at the keyboard and not really come up with anything. It usually comes like as I'm going to bed or if I'm in the shower or something a melody will just pop in my head and it starts as just like a basic little idea like that figure out the chord progressions to go with it and then I just kind of take that and build it into a song and really it usually seems like it just writes itself like it feels like I'm not really doing much I'm just a vessel for this uh, piece to compose itself almost <laughs> okay in your opinion how much of it is uh, like study and how much of it is just feeling it and, and going with it? I'd say it's like 50-50. Well, maybe not that much. I don't know. Like 60% feeling, 40% studying. People um, underestimate the value of knowing what you're doing when it comes to music. And I'm not at all knocking people who can just do it by ear. That's absolutely amazing. But I don't know, there's something so cool about knowing the theory behind it and actually knowing like, okay, if I do this, it'll sound like this. Or sometimes it's the other way around, like I'll write something by ear and then I'll go back and try to figure out what I did. I'm like, oh, okay, that's why this sounds so cool and I know to use that again if I'm going for a certain feeling. And my professors have taught me a ton. Like I'm a way better composer than I am now. Or, I am a way better composer now than I was back in high school and not really getting any, you know, experience with it, any teaching. And I mean, I'm sure some of it is from just practice, but I don't know. My professors are very helpful in kind of giving me ideas of what to do, guiding me. So yeah, I mean, it's both. It's both feeling and coming from the heart, but a lot of it's also more academic and knowing what you're doing. And um, yeah, I am a music major and um, I want to go to grad school to learn film composing just so I can get to learn all the equipment and you know all the software and just really know what I'm doing because I feel like there's just so much I don't know still and I can get so much better than I am now. And uh, last thing, back to hit record. Uh, or what do you think uh, with technology and and the internet and everything? How do you think that's affecting art and collaboration and everything? 
Um, oh, like, the internet is just doing so much for collaboration. I've collaborated with people from all around the world. And not to say I haven't collaborated with people I know in real life, because I definitely have, and that's a whole different thing, because, you know, it's different being able to actually be in the same room with someone and actually talk about what you're doing. It's better, but um, the internet is great because, like, you know, I can collaborate with somebody. I can do music for a film for somebody who's in Texas or Scotland or anywhere, and then maybe they get a voiceover from somebody in, I don't know, Florida, and then, like, somebody up in Canada edits it, and it's just amazing how it, like, just the internet can bring people from all over the world together to work on art rather than having to rely on whoever's in your immediate area.